Hello, and welcome to the third episode of Let's Talk Reloading with Uncle Jack. Today, we're going to be loading for my Smith & Wesson 38 Special Revolver. We're going to be loading some Rainier Hollow Points, CCI Small Pistol Primers, my favorite CFE Pistol Powder, and we're going to be loading some of my once-fired field brass. I already have my Rockford Arsenal two-thirds filled with water. Let's go ahead and pour in the brass. I like to add one cup of brass, I'm sorry, one cap of brass cleaning solution and about three drops of dishwashing detergent. The Rockford Arsenal tumbler is very simple to use. Fill it with water, add your solutions in your brass. If you've removed your primers, you can use stainless steel pins to clean the primer pockets. These cartridges still have the primers in them and I'm going to just be tumbling them alone. Take the drum, place it on the unit, and we go for three hours. Okay guys, while my brass was tumbling, I did a little more research on powder and the ideal powder for me is going to be like a Hodgdon 38. CFE pistol powder is a slightly slower burning powder and tight group is a slightly faster burning powder. So I don't have my optimal powder but I am going to turn this reloading session into a little bit of load development. What we're going to do is load 10 rounds with the CFE pistol and 10 rounds with tight group we're going to be using this recommended starting loads and we're going to take those loads to the range and take some notes on what happens. Also, I wanted to tell you that I've tumbled my brass, I patted it dry with a towel, and then I baked it in the oven at 350 degrees for about a half an hour to make sure it's dry. On the next section of the clip, we're going to talk about die setup. Okay, let's talk about die setup for the 38 Special. The sizing and decapping die is the easiest die. You raise the ram all the way, thread it down until it touches the top of the shell carrier, and that is it. Lock it in place. The flaring and charging die is a little more complicated. I run a shell up all the way tight thread the die down and add 1 8 turn for flaring. Then I check and make sure that the bullet easily drops in. The most complicated, especially for the 38 Special, is the crimping and bullet seating die. The crimping and bullet seating die does two functions simultaneously. It sets the bullet and the crimp. I like to take a factory round that I want to closely duplicate I run the factory round up all the way, thread the die down until it matches the crimp, and then simply seat, uh, set the bullet seater depth to the top of the bullet. Uh, these are basically the exact instructions that come with your Lee dies. The uh, instructions will be uh, clearly written in here, and I basically follow them to a T. In the next section of the video, we're going to go ahead and load 10 rounds with our CFE pistol and 10 rounds with our tight group. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, let's go ahead and load around here with uh, tight group. Place our case in the shell holder, run it through the sizing and decapping die. Install a new primer, flare the neck, it's a pre-weighed powder charge. I use the empty slot in the turret as a visual powder inspection. The bullet 
in there nice and straight. Seat the bullet and crimp. We do want a heavy crimp. Okay, let's go ahead and load one up here with CFE pistol. Same process. Resize and decap the brass. New small pistol primer. Flare of the neck. Pre-measured powder charge. Again, I use my open slot here as a visual powder inspection. Finish the round by seating the bullet and heavy crimp on the brass. We'll go ahead and do one more of those. That's a deep cap and resize. Primer, flare. Powder charge. Visual powder inspection, seat and crimp. Okay guys, I just wanted to talk to you for one more second about what we're actually going to do down at the range. This is my Smith & Wesson 642 Airweight. It's a beautiful personal protection gun and surprisingly very accurate. It does have a 1 and 7 eighths inch barrel. This is where the varying types of powder come into play. I believe the CFE powder is going to be better suited to a 4 inch barrel because the burn time is going to be longer. We're going to shoot some control. These are some Federal and some Remington. I expect the Federal and Remington to break a thousand feet per second because they are 130 grain. This is our starting load of tight group, which I expect to be in the eight to 900 feet per second. And over here, the CFE is going to come in a little slower. I doubt we're going to get a full burn. Uh, I'm guessing about 750 feet per second. We're going to measure all this with my Caldwell Precision Ballistic Chronograph. Let's go ahead and go out to the range. Okay, let's go ahead and shoot some of those factory loads. Now these are 130 grain. I'm expecting velocities over a thousand feet per second. Seven oh two. Seven thirty nine. Seven forty four. and 712. So we're getting about 725 feet per second out of the factory rounds. Okay, now I have my reloads. These ones were loaded with the starting, the recommended starting charge for CFE pistol powder. Let's see what kind of velocities we're getting. My guess is with a slower burning powder and a short barrel, we're going to see low velocities. 556 551 580 and 638 pretty big variance there Okay guys, finally we're going to try these loads loaded with tight group. I expect the velocities to come back up as this is a faster burning powder. 567. 555. 465. 
613. And we didn't get that last one to read there. Now, I am using my chronograph without the uh, solar shields. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and we're going to get a little better average. We may throw out one or two if they're uh, extremely high or low. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching the reloading video. For more reloading videos and other outdoor videos, please subscribe to my channel, Uncle Jack's Outdoors. I hope everybody has a great 2019. We're supposed to get some snow tonight, 6 to 8 inches. We'll see what happens. See you guys later.